Nowadays, all over the world one can meet people with a strange mutilation. A scar from the corners of the mouth to the ears. Strange scars can be perceived as obtained in separate accidents. Many people do not realize that it is the result of a special punishment that appeared a hundred years ago. One of the most famous people having this scar is actor Tommy Flanagan. During his young years, he worked as an artist and DJ in a pub in Glasgow. At the entrance to that pub, he got his famous scars. Near the entrance, he was attacked by robbers. They demanded his coat and his music records. As a result of the attack, his face was mutilated. His cheeks were disfigured by slash wounds. After the attack, Tommy was deeply depressed and believed he would never be able to live normally again. During those terrible days, his friends gave him huge support. It should be recognized that the actor's case is one of the few scary stories with a happy ending. During the 20th century in Scotland, gangsters punished each other by carving a crazy grin, known as a Glasgow smile, into the sides of their victims' mouths. Gangsters didn't know that their spontaneous punishment would find imitators. The Bridgeton team gang made this way of bullying people popular in Glasgow's criminal world. And the main thing about the smile was not even the outward signs, but the extreme pain the victim suffered. People are extremely inventive when it comes to elaborating ways of inflicting pain. And the Glasgow smile was the most horrific one of all known gruesome methods. This practice involves cutting the victim's mouth on the sides, sometimes all the way down to the ears. It originated during the darkest period in the history of Scotland's largest city. The screams of the victim writhing in pain only made matters worse as the skin was torn further, leaving the person with gruesome scars for life. In fiction, the Glasgow's smile is sometimes referred to as Chelsea's smile. It is most often associated with the Joker, the iconic villain. Many people think it's a terrifying reality of the past, but unfortunately, it has remained the same in the present day. In the 19th century, Scotland's industrial boom attracted thousands of workers to Glasgow. The city's population more than doubled. The construction of numerous factories and shipyards attracted many people, and Glasgow turned from a small town into the largest industrial center in Scotland. In the metropolis, people faced new challenges, hunger, poverty, epidemics. In such an environment, despair sets in quickly, and it becomes a breeding ground for crime. After the First World War, the problems only worsened. Criminal organizations known as Glasgow's Razor Gangs controlled small criminal empires in the city's East End and South Side neighborhoods. That's when punishing the enemy by cutting the cheeks from the corners of the mouth to the cheekbones came into use. The chief constable of the city, Percy Silito, was able to deal with Glasgow gangs for a time. He provided police officers with wireless radios that allowed communication between headquarters and vehicles. Many believe that it was this innovation that helped to reduce the rampant crime in Glasgow. And Silito became famous throughout Britain and was appointed Director General of MI5, Britain's internal security service. Many criminal gangs were destroyed and their leaders were imprisoned. However, it was too late to do anything about their trademark smile, which had taken root in a less organized crime society. The Glasgow smile was used to reward criminal rivals, recalcitrant small and medium-sized businessmen, and even random passers-by who were victims of assaults and robberies. The Glasgow smile was also used by fascists, whose organizations began to multiply in the 1930s. Stabbings in the city were often caused by religious differences. Protestant gangs like the Billy Boys fought against the Catholic Norman Conks. Later, they spawned smaller but no less violent criminal organizations that ruthlessly slashed rivals with razors in endless internecine skirmishes. Why did the smile become the most popular method of retaliation in those wars? There were several reasons. The first was visibility. The most talented surgeons of the time could not hide such an injury. The scars showed that the man had incurred the wrath of one of the city's many gangs. The next reason was the speed of execution. The wound was inflicted easily and quickly with a razor, a knife, or even a shard of glass. The Glasgow smile was also used to mark politicians. One of these was William Joyce, 
nicknamed Lord Howe Howe. He was born in the United States to a family of poor Irish Catholics and was never really a lord, but he soon moved to England and became a member of a fascist organization. On the evening of October 22, 1924 in London, he was guarding a conservative party politician. While Joyce was standing guard, an unknown assailant attacked him from behind, stabbed him in the face and fled. A long, deep scar was left on the right side of his mouth. It was the Glasgow smile. Then Joyce got a good position with the British Union of Fascists, who supported German Nazism from its rise to power until Hitler's defeat. Joyce's scar, which he called a scratch, was a sign of death for him. After the Allied victory in 1945, he was easily identified and hanged as a traitor. The use of the Glasgow smile, of course, was not limited to Britain. In 1934 in New York, the reign of terror provoked by Albert Fish, a serial killer, and the so-called Brooklyn Vampire ended. This man raped, tortured, and ate children. He branded one of his victims with the Glasgow smile. Fish was caught after he killed and ate a 10-year-old Grace Bud. The girl's disappearance led to the exposure of the maniac and the unraveling of a whole tangle of his crimes. It turned out that Albert Fish had killed several children between 1924 and 1932. He mutilated his second victim, four-year-old Billy Gaffney, in February 1927 by carving the Glasgow smile on his face. When Fish was exposed, he gleefully claimed that, among other heinous acts, he had cut off Gaffney's ears and nose and cut his mouth from ear to ear. Fish was brought to trial in 1935, but the Gaffney family never managed to bury the child's body. His remains were never found, and the horrifying image of a little boy with a disfigured face forever became a dark page in the history of one of America's first serial killers. Perhaps the most famous example of the Glasgow smile is associated with the name of Elizabeth Short, who became known as the Black Dahlia after her death. The girl worked as a waitress and aspiring actress in Los Angeles. Her mutilated body was discovered on a January morning in 1974. This high-profile case was all over the newspapers. The killer carefully cut Elizabeth's body in half at the waist, covered her limbs with multiple stab wounds, and left them in a bizarre pose. A wide Glasgow smile was cut on the victim's face. Despite the media hype and an extensive investigation that included questioning more than 150 suspects, Short's killer was never found. To this day, her death remains one of the most disturbing unsolved cases in criminal history. From the late 20th century to the present day, the Glasgow smile has experienced a renaissance in the United Kingdom, its country of origin. In the 1970s, United Kingdom soccer fan teams evolved into gangs that provoked violence at games across the country. Meanwhile, organizations of white supremacy supporters, neo-Nazis, and other hate groups gained popularity in the UK. They contributed to the emergence of the Chelsea Bounty Hunters, a group associated with Chelsea Football Club that quickly gained a reputation for extreme violence. Drawing on a tradition of terror inspired by the horrific Glasgow gangs of the Industrial Revolution, the bounty hunters decided to use the Glasgow smile as their visiting card, calling it the Chelsea smile or Chelsea grin. In violent brawls at soccer matches, the headhunters often clashed with hated rivals from other parts of London, especially from Millwall in the south of the British capital. These clashes led to huge riots that even the most hardened police officers struggled to stop. On London's King's Road, near Chelsea's Stamford Bridge Stadium, the bounty hunters were famous for inflicting a grin on anyone who crossed their path, whether those were members of their own team who made a slip-up or members of opposing gangs. The gruesome mutilation has gained such popularity and its history has grown in so many details that there are gangs and lone maniacs around the world using this gruesome method. The concept of the Glasgow smile can even be found in medical textbooks that describe recommended treatments. In 2011, it was estimated that every six hours in Glasgow, someone suffered this serious facial injury.